Blog Talk Radio. Hi, this is Christina Forrester with Christian Democrats of America, and this is the CDA Sunday podcast. We are continuing our Christians Against Hate series this week, and I'm happy to be talking to former NBA player John Salmond. Uh, John is actually uh, part of our board, uh, our advisory board at CDA, and we've been so happy to have him and his input and um, just get to know him over the past year. Um, John is a former NBA player who played opposite Derrick Rose for several seasons as a shooting guard with the Chicago Bulls, where he averaged 18 points a game. So all you sports fanatics are going to uh, like to hear some of these stats. Uh, Salmon's also played with the 69ers, Bucks, Kings, Raptors, and most recently with the Pelicans. Salmon drinks in the top 10 of all-time scorers in the history of the NBA. As a social engineer, Salmon focuses on many businesses and social initiatives that make a significant impact. He's focusing right now on bringing his 3D formula of desire plus diversity plus discipline to the entrepreneurial world, just as he brought it to every moment on the court. So I'm excited to talk to John today. Um, uh, first, I uh, just want to be able to give you some updates. We are uh, finally launching our new website and debuting it uh, next week, along with our new magazine. It's the first ever magazine Christian Democrats has had, The Progressive Gap. And um, through this platform, we're going to be able to fight for all the causes uh, that we talk about all the time, we're going to be able to have a better platform to get the message out and fight against the rhetoric from the religious right and all the fake news and fake spiritual news that we get all the time. And I don't have to tell you, all of you know how important this is uh, for our country that we have another voice and we're stepping up into that role to give a platform and another voice out there. Um, and so we're excited to be able to share this with you next week. Um, so watch for updates with that. You can um, get onto our website and get an update um, through our email list, through social media, um, through the channels, any, any direction you want to go. But um, definitely sign up to our email list. And um, we also ask everyone to just remember that um, we are a grassroots movement and none of this is funded by any outside group. We have no direct affiliations with the DNC or millionaire hedge funds, anything. We need both volunteers and contributors and we appreciate anything you can do to help us keep this podcast and everything we are working towards moving and growing. So we ask you to consider joining the movement in whatever way you feel and pray for us, pray for this movement it's definitely a spiritual battle that we're facing as well as um, all the other types of battles and political. So we ask for your prayers and your covering over the things that we're doing and godly wisdom in every way as we move forward. Um, and so look for that next week. If you want some more information on what the progressive gap and just the entire idea behind the gap means, um, you can check out our page. We posted an article. But I'll post that again um, for everyone to see on Monday morning so you can check out um, The Progressive Gap. It's an article I wrote in 2016, just really kind of framing what I believe is one of the biggest problems that we have, not just in politics, but also in the church right now. And it's uh, something where we need to bridge the gap and we need to mend the gap. So um, I hope that you will join us in looking at all the ways we can bridge the gap and um, so we're excited to share that. All right, um, I think we have John on here right now. So I'm just gonna let John on and I'm so excited to have this conversation with you, John, because of just every, we haven't talked in a while on the podcast, but I think last time was during the election and so much has happened since then. And we've just seen something, such an upswing in hate in our society. So thank you for coming on today and um, talking with me on a podcast. Yep, thanks for having me. So I guess I, I want to start with just um, talking about the DACA program and uh, get your thoughts on that and just the general attitude that we've been seeing towards immigrants and minorities in general. Um, this is um, 
the it's something that's very disturbing to a lot of people, um, especially when we're talking about um, you know, some of them are children, but some of them, a lot of DACA recipients are over 18, but these are people who have grown up in the United States. This is the only home they've ever seen, and economically, it doesn't make sense. There's really no reason that any of it makes sense unless you simply have an anti-immigrant attitude towards um, towards um, immigrants. So I just wanted to get your thoughts first on, on the DACA program being rescinded this week and with this general kind of uh, the way people are viewing immigrants. Well, it's disheartening to me um, because it, 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 it hits very close to home for me because my wife is an immigrant. Uh, she's uh, originally from Jamaica. Um, she came over here. Um, at a young age, uh, we moved to New York, and a lot of, of uh, other family members uh, did the same thing. Uh, they moved from Jamaica, um, some moved to New York, some moved to Florida, and uh, you know she she uh, she came over here and she got a her visa, and then nine eleven hit, and then it was kind of like. You know, she had to really get on, uh, get on the ball with becoming a U.S. citizen, and she 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 did that. Um, but by the time she did that, she was she was older. She was in college. She understood everything that was going on, so uh, mm-hmm. she knew how important it was. But when you come over here as a minor, you don't even know that you are illegal. Like you're over here and. Um, you know, you're just trying to live life. You're trying to make it by just like everybody else, and you're trying to, you know, do the right things. And, you know, she has uh, family members that came over here as minors, and um, their parents didn't uh, do all the correct paperwork to, to, you know, get them legal. And now, you know, they're they're struggling. Um, because mm. of what's going on, and they are good, hard-working people. Um, they joined the DACA program, um, so they can pursue being legal. Um, mm-hmm. And now that you know uh, what our current president is doing now and rescinding DACA, I mean, they don't have you know their future is not looking as bright as it once did. And it's disheartening. It's disheartening because they are great people. Um, They're not criminals. Uh, They uh, joined DACA because they wanted to work. Uh, They wanted to pay taxes. Um, So it's it's, it's disheartening to me because it it hits home. Um, And uh, there's a lot of people out there. I think it's something something like 800,000 uh, people in this program, and I mean, yeah, I'm eight hundred thousand. Like, yeah, yeah, fifteen percent of them uh, own homes. Um, so what's going to happen to the homes, like to abandoned homes and cars? It's just the economy is going to hurt the economy. I, I just don't, I don't understand what's the upside in doing this. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know. Right, right, and. You know, I can't imagine the emotional toll that that must take. I mean, I can imagine it just from the fact that I've known people who are, you know, trying to go through our immigration system and and how stressful the whole thing is and the, and all of the red tape and the hoops. And people don't understand yeah. unless you've been through that system what it really entails. They they think that people just come over here and you know just want to do something illegal by staying and yeah. it's not that that's not the case at all and and unless you really understand the system and what goes on um you know, people just need to <laughs> they just they just need to yeah, think I mean, before Trump, you're walking in someone's shoes you know <laughs> you're not walking yeah. in their shoes you don't understand speaking about the process uh my wife has family members who filed to become a legal immigrant it took them 10 years to, for all the paperwork and all the stuff that they had to do to, to, to for them to become legal. Um, so, I mean, it's a long, 
drawn out process. Um, uh, it's, I mean, it's not it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy just to come here and become legal. Um, so it's, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of people trying to do it. So I mean, it's just all the way around. It's just it's a, it's a bad situation. And, I mean, they've been yeah, you no, know, for years they've been uh, you no know, fighting over this same issue, and President Obama, you know, took it upon himself to you know look like this is what I'm gonna do and. You know, this is how we're going to move forward. And he told the immigrants, if you come forward, you won't be departed. And now our current president is rescinding on that and using uh, all these uh, immigrants and their uh, information that they uh, receive from uh, what Barack Obama did. Now he's using it against them. And that's just, that's, that's bad. That's, even hard to trust a government like that when you when you use right. it like that. So. Yeah, exactly. Now I know like Trump has tweeted this week and has made statements saying that he's um that if, if Congress doesn't step in in the next six months that he's going to mm -hmm. um that no one's gonna get deported and all this. But but like you said about trust and, and the the record we've seen from Trump, like I don't know if people that you know, like, do you, do they feel assured when he has a tweet out there, or does is there? I mean, that must not be the kind of assurance they need because this is their very lives that are on the line right now, and right now all they have is a tweet of assurance from, from the president. No, that's not no no that's that's no assurance. I mean he, I mean he, I mean it's been a lot of lies, and you know, I mean how it's hard to to trust anything that he says at this point. Um, with all the lies he been he been he been telling, so him yeah. tweeting that is not comfort to to anybody. Um, I don't, I don't, like a tweet from the current president is is not comforting at all. Right, right, exactly. Well, um, it's something we definitely need to take action, um, protest, sign petitions, call your local. You know, uh, representatives, let them know how you feel about DACA. Um, and, uh, you know, because a lot of times I feel like there's one voice that's out there, and, and it's a very anti immigrant voice over the last mm -hmm. year that we've heard, and it's, it's so strong. And the thing is, we're a nation of immigrants. We were built by mm -hmm. immigrants, and we're all immigrants. If you're not Native American, you're an immigrant. And mm -hmm. um, so it's. Um, yeah, it's just it's a really sad time for our country from that point of view, um, and it kind of goes into the whole theme of Christians against hate, and um, that kind of brings into my next question for you: is your thoughts on? It, I think it all kind of bleeds together. This combating racism, um, the, the, the anti-immigrant views, and the racist views that we've seen this year it's just really been unleashed like in my lifetime i've never seen it um and so I'd, I'd like to know you know kind of how you see that um these past months and um what can we do to combat this you know as christians and stand against this kind of hate and this blanket racism that's been almost like accepted by um in the mainstream in so many ways well, I mean, when you when you look at companies or organizations, you know, the culture of the organization or the company starts from the top and it, and it trickles down. And when we have our president uh, um, not condemning hate, um, running a campaign on hate, it gives people under him license to 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 you know show that hate and a lot of that's coming to the light right now because of because of uh our president's campaign and everything that he stands for um uh, and, and and it's worse now that he's in office um and for me the most simplest thing if you read the Bible, the most simplest thing is love your neighbor as yourself. Right. If, if we do that, that would take care of everything. 
far as racism and all this stuff that's going on. If we just love our neighbors as as ourselves, then we will our country will come a long way. And it's simple to say, but it's so it's it's so true. When you think about it, it's it's so true. And that's why that's why it's mm-hmm. in the Bible. Like that's why you know uh, it's really that simple. Just love your neighbor. Just love Amen. your neighbor. That's it. Amen. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm just going to mention that in that same place where um, Jesus says, love your neighbor, they challenged him and said, who is my neighbor? Because they wanted to get away with, it was one of the Pharisees, they wanted to get away with being able to, um, it said, the Bible says he wanted to justify himself. So he asked, who yeah. is my neighbor? And that's yeah. when Jesus gave the great, the good Samaritan, which the Samaritans at the time were just the, the kind of the scum of society they were the worst of the worst and the you know most of the jews wouldn't even um you know eat a meal with samaritans you didn't talk to samaritans you didn't go around them they were just you know outcasts and he used them as the example of, yep. of the neighbor so he's just showing us that there's no excuses that okay who is a true neighbor <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah that's, that's there's no excuses there's no excuses just love your neighbor Right. Amen. Um, well, um, I wanted to ask you about being a Christian Democrat, and you've been on our board now um, for close to a year, which has been great and wonderful to have you and um, get your perspective on these things. And, you know, have you have you always been a Christian Democrat, is it like through your career? Um, or was there like a, as far as the Christian side of that, was there like a spiritual turning point? In your life, at some point, yeah. um, I wouldn't say. Well, I mean, I, I I I became a Christian at a very young age. I became a Christian before I knew anything about politics. Um, so it really wasn't. Uh, I, I was a Christian first, um, and I really started to really pay attention to politics uh, in college. Went to the University of Miami, and I was down there for the whole thing with Bush, um, kind of still in the election, and um, that kind of you know uh, woke me up to you know to how the, how the world works, um, and I started to you know at that point pay more attention, and. Um, you know, I started. You know, and I mean, I, I don't know if anybody uh, agrees a hundred percent with any party. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it wasn't like you know, it was like I I, I saw the Democratic issues and I was like, oh yes, I agree one hundred percent of those. That, that's that's not the case. But in reality, when I started to, uh, you know not look at things in theory, but look at things in reality, more and more I paid attention, the more I realized that in reality, even though, uh, um, you know, Democrats say these things or Republicans say these, these things, or I felt like the Democratic Party was more uh, for the people than for the everyday person than uh, the Republican Party was. Um, mm. So that's what really made me, um, you know, uh, um, you know, represent as a as a Democrat. And then, you no, know, like I said, I was a Christian before that. Um, so kind of, I mean, I, I was a Christian Democrat out of just, you know, the, almost that's just what it was. It wasn't, I didn't become... Uh, a Democrat because I was a Christian. Um, I became a Democrat because of, in reality, how things was playing out for us in, in politics, and I just didn't agree with some of the things that was going on in the Republican Party um, from a reality standpoint. Um, in right. theory, I, I, I may agree with some things in theory, um, but you know. Uh, when it comes down to it, you know, I'm a, 
I'm a regular person, um, just like everybody else. I'm no better than anybody else. And I feel like, uh, you know, the Republican Party is for, um, you know, uh, upper echelon, you know, rich uh, white male. And mm-hmm. I just I just couldn't agree with with that uh with that tone, with that, you know, with that reality. Um, right. And it seems like every as soon as they got into office, um and you know, they control both houses of Congress now and it seems like everything that is proposed somehow comes back and I've even heard Republicans, Joe Scarborough, um, you know, Morning Joe, who's a Republican. I've heard Chris Matthews, who's an independent, you know, and there's people um, uh, you know, on CNN and all over and, and commentators I've heard who aren't Democrats necessarily or on the far left at all who have said the same thing, that it seems like it all comes back to tax breaks for the rich. It mm-hmm. just all comes back to how can we help the the big oil companies, the yep. you know the big corporations, not the workers, not help bring wages up for Americans and and everyday people. I mean, Trump talked about that a lot on the campaign trail, but he's done nothing to do that so far. Yeah. There's been nothing to help workers, help wages, help the wage gap. There's been nothing done, and in fact, all Republicans want to do all the the health care. Um, Obamacare appeal, it was all about tax breaks um, for the rich. It all came back down to that. And I'm glad fellow Republicans who are more in the mainstream are finally kind of wising up to that. (laughs) I think because, I mean, uh, I think because, I mean, if you are a Christian, I I mean, if you're a Christian, you're a Republican, Democrat, but I I think if you do have some kind of moral being about you, like what's going on? Like you have, like what's going on right now? It's, it's hard not to. Um, it's hard to just let your moral, your morals just go by like that without you know standing up uh, with what's going on right now, regardless if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Like I mean, if you have any kind of moral sense about you, like it's hard to like just sit by and let things go the way they are. So I am, like you said, I am glad some Republicans are standing up and you know trying to you know fight back against their own party. Right, right, and well, it's going to take them because right now they're in control yeah. of uh, of Congress, so they're going to have to. Um, you know, I, I was glad lots of people did stand up and made public statements when the president didn't condemn white supremacists, the Nazis, yeah. which was just shocking. I think it shocked people as much as we already knew about about Trump. That was kind of a, a level that, you know, none of us expected <laughs> that he would yeah. go to actually condemn white supremacists. Yeah, after that whole mess, after that whole mess, I just, I came to the realization that, you know, no, throughout history, throughout the Bible, throughout history, when we have been some bad, evil leaders out there, and we just in the era that, you know, this is what it is. And we have to, for as long as he's in office, we have to, you know, just continue to keep the faith and continue to uh, be a Christian and continue to love our neighbor and, you know, just try to, you know, fight as 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 much as we can until we can, you know, get uh, a good leader in there. Um, I mean, right. It's, I mean, it's no different from things uh, things in the past that happened with different bad leaders or evil leaders. So, right. You know, Maybe trying our best our to, to. Right. I mean, showing love as much as we can. You know, just in mm-hmm. everyday lives. You know, we we have members. And our Christians Against Hate groups that talk about, you know, they um, just, you know, give someone a hug, you know, or <laughs> whatever, mm-hmm. and just talk mm-hmm. to people when they're out, you know, going out to business. Just try to um, spread a little bit more light into into things right now. And, and 
we should be the ones doing that, you know. I mean, everyone yeah. should do it, but, you know, it, it falls on us, you know. So many times the Christian community just isn't standing up and, and you know, taking our place, and our place should be to be spreading more love, uh, light, joy, and peace to people because people need peace right now too. A lot of people are scared, um, like we were talking about. So, um, so yeah, it's a it's an important time for us to do that. Well, did um, do you have any? We're just about out of time, about five minutes. But is there anything else on just on your mind, on your heart that you want to? Share or talk I mean, about, or just a word for our listeners and our community that you want to share, a word of encouragement. Well, it is this, like you just said, this is a time when, you know, there is a lot of people that may not be Christians, but they are scared and they don't know where to turn because of what's going on in, in our country right now. And this is a good time to reach out to those people as Christians to try to invite them, invite them to to know Christ. Um, uh, mm-hmm. invite them to, you know, become uh, a follower of Christ where they can find some purpose in their life, um, where they can find some peace in their life and, and know that whatever is going on with the government or the president or uh, whatever is going on, they still have, you know, they still have Christ. And, I mean, he's still there for them. And, and they have some comfort and some peace in knowing that and knowing that he's not going to leave them and um, he can overcome everything that's going on in their lives right now, uh, regardless of how much power uh, one person has. Um, if they have him, they can they can overcome it through him. Uh, so this is a good time to reach out to people to try to bring them to Christ because um, there is a lot of scared people out there that are, that's not Christians that, you know, that we need to find and we need to, you know, try to, you know, bring them in and uh, show them the way, show them the light. Well, thank you for that. It's, um, it's, it's so true that right now is really a time we need to be um, sharing sharing the love like like we never have and so many times like I said their Christian community just has not stood up and done that instead of use the platform for you know judgment or whatever and yeah. it's it's our job right now to try to get in there and and talk about the truth because there's a there's a lot of Christians living in fear too and that's because they're not focusing on on God they're not focusing on God as as our as our provider and but they're looking at, you know, they're looking at guns and, you know, military might or, um, you know, all the, you know, the immigrants are out to get me, transgender people in bathrooms are out to get me. We posted a, a <laughs> thing on that this week. You know, there's all this fear of things, and, and that a lot of what Trump ran on was fear and fear yeah. mongering yeah. about this group, and you have to be afraid of this group. And it, but like, that's such a good word what you just said there. Just we need to trust and know. God is is ultimately in control and put our faith and our trust and our hope in him. So true. Yeah, and as Christians come together instead of being yes. divided. Um oh, wouldn't politics that be great? can do that. Yes. <laughs> politics can can divide you, but as a body we need to stay together. Um, even in our differences we still need to stay together because all opinions matter, all the opinions count. Um, from the left or the right, but if we can, you know, come together and and speak on it in a civil matter instead of all this uh, division and hate speak, uh, we can then we then we can work together. Um, so if the if the if the body is divided, then what is the rest of the world going to be? That's so true, and, and there's so much division. It's just uh, there's a schism there, and, that, and that's actually what our the whole progressive gap is about so um the the magazine everything being launched next week that's what it's about is that gap and there's, and that that is so many people in the gap and there's this left and there's this right in the church and in politics but there's a lot more people in that gap that are just you know they they aren't accepted by maybe the left but they're also not accepted by the right and a lot of our community that's that's the case you know you're not accepted by a christian community but then you and you're bullied and religious peer pressure but yet 
on the far left, you know, you're not accepted because you're a Christian. And we just see a lot of this. Um, there's got to be some uh, somewhere for them to go, and we're hoping we can help to bridge that gap for people. But thank you so much, John, and I hope that we can get you on again to talk because I think it's a um, great topic, important, and people need to hear from you. And um, just uh, thanks for your um, words and your insight today. All right. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Um, and you can um, connect with John on Twitter and on his Facebook page as well, and we'll post those links. Um, we I just want to end out with a scripture um, today in Leviticus. Yes, I'm going back into the Old Testament. <laughs> Leviticus 19, 33 through 34, and 24 and 22. When the alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Wow. It's almost like he's just talking to us right now. Thank you all so much for joining us, and um, we'll talk to you next time.